Mona, uh, your user base has also grown more quickly than you expected since you launched. You now, last I checked, have around 10,000 registered customers or by January of this year. Um, you're known for your customer service, which also historically distinguished Amazon. How did you achieve good customer service and how do you plan to maintain consistency with that as you scale? When we launched the site, there was a key need in the market that was not met. And that need was to provide the consumer with the single largest catalog of products where she could search, compare, and feel empowered to buy the product that's right for her. So in October of 2011, the day we launched the site, we already had over 30,000 products from the region and abroad under one umbrella. Today, about eight months later, we have just under 60,000 products. And again, this is under one year in operation. So to start with, we gave the consumer exactly what she wanted, and that is empowered choice of products available locally and regionally. The second thing that was very important is the consumer experience. We promise fast, cost-effective delivery. When a mother orders um, a pack of diapers or a baby bottle or wants to replace her pacifier that tore, she doesn't want to re wait extended periods of time. And it's that commitment to the customer experience that has gained us not only very high loyalty, but equally important, a tremendous amount of low-cost viral elements. And then finally, I'll finish by saying, but our consumer is very unique in that according to Nielsen, 68% of purchase decisions of a first-time mother are done in the window of three months prenatal to three months postnatal. That means that if you're able to reach that consumer during that window of opportunity, you essentially have a captive audience and a loyal consumer. Mona, as you scale, um did you, did you put into place a, a strict training culture at Mom's World? I mean, how will you maintain that? Um, every person at Mom's World, whether you're a technology developer, a customer service, um, a marketeer, even myself, has to spend hours every day in customer service and logistics. Every person in the organization is trained on the A to Z of the customer service and logistics. At the end of the day, that is what defines us and that is what drives us. And insofar that we never compromise on that experience, we will continue to grow exponentially. So yes, our training is very rigorous and there has to be also an element in training of, um, of common sense. So um, when we do hire people, we do place them two weeks of training, and we do gauge the intangible common sense that cannot be defined. Paul, um, how did you build a user base in such a cutthroat market with so many clones? What's crucial for differentiating a daily deal site, and is there such a thing as customer loyalty in the daily deal space? Okay, um, so from a user acquisition point, I would actually slightly disagree with Ahmed's strategy of acquiring as many users as possible. I think this market, because e-commerce as a whole is quite new, it's very easy to acquire users. I mean, you can bid 20 cent and get a user to sign up to your database, but I would look at active users as a way to define whether or not your company is successful or not. So from our strategy, we focused a lot on online marketing, but we also focused on the 360 campaigns, which involved a lot of PR, offline activities where even in Saudi Arabia we had a bunch of students walking around with Kabon flags on their popes, dish dashes, and signing up users. So I think this market is prone to not just online marketing. I think you need to focus on an offline execution that'll actually help scale quicker. And through that PR activity and that offline component, I think we did differentiate ourselves and uh, has brought Kabon to where it is today. Do you think your customers are loyal to Kabon? My data says they are, um, but How I do think you track that. that? Hmm? How do you track that? How do you know they aren't just grabbing up as many daily deals as they can? So the business kind of, uh, there's a lot of competitors out there, but it's uh, ultimately down to the best deal plus customer service. And it's come to a point where customers are now asking for much more than just a daily deal. They're looking for choice. So what Cabona started to do is actually differentiate itself and become a discounted e-commerce player. So 
Today we have a fashion vertical, we have a travel vertical, electronics, products, moms and kids. So we're actually kind of competing with the number of people sitting beside me in a small sense. But uh, I think through that choice we began to differentiate ourselves and breed loyalty because people understand the experience they get through Gabon.com. If I just may clarify here, <clears throat> I specifically mentioned that we looked at marginal purchase behavior, repetitive behavior, uh, and order, you know, ordering behavior on the website. You definitely have to calculate uh, what, what your users are doing on, on, on a real-time basis. When I said acquire as many users as, as you can, what is meant from that is acquire as many users that you can potentially convert onto repeat buyers uh, 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 over time. So it's not just about acquiring users, you have to acquire quality users. To go back to discussing daily deals, um, many people would say the daily deals model is now broken. Um, even is now broken. Um, even even Groupon's own data has shown that in, in saturated markets, their conversion rates are dropping. Their revenue per Groupon sold is dropping. Um, the Middle East doesn't yet appear to be saturated. Last year, in the last six months of 2011, um, the 40 like a uh, Daily deal sites grew by 42%, which is more than anywhere else in the world. But it will happen. Uh, what's your plan when the market becomes saturated? What, what are you going to do to keep growing your customer base? I think as an e-commerce play, the daily deal model was an excellent model to bring into this market. It did involve the headache of logistics, as you know, and it's all based on email. So I think the play does transition to be where we're now focusing more on products and scale from that. Um, I think the daily deal model will evolve. Uh, we're evolving quite quickly. We're 18 months live um, and we have transitioned heavily into a product-based business. Um, but I see this market doesn't have defined consumption patterns yet where people in the US would go to Amazon to buy a CD or a DVD. Here that isn't defined at all. So I think the platforms that are sitting here, we can define consumption patterns and there's an awful lot of upper tier that we can actually take. Um, because the online market is still relatively small. 